Hello everyone, Zentaco here. Today we're going to be learning how to implement sound into our games. It's really easy, so this is going to be a short one. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you what I have right now. This little platformer we're going to use as the basics to teach you how to uh, implement sound effects. So I just have this blob dude who jumps around. So <clears throat> sound is put into your games via this little object here called the sound object and there's samples and music. Uh, we're not going to use music. Music is, is essentially just MIDI files. We're going to use samples for everything including our music. So for example, let's say we wanted to put some music into this game. Real easy, all we got to do. Let's add a uh, new comment real quick. Okay, we're going to say uh, music. So what we would do is add a start of frame event <clears throat> because we want our music to play at the start of the frame. Um, so we go to the music tab, to the music object, sorry, the sound object. Go to samples, we're going to play a sample. We're actually going to uh, play and loop a sample on a specific channel, okay? So we're gonna browse from file to find the uh, sound we want. And I have that inside of the project folder here. Hold on one second, let me find it. There it is. And we're going to use something called um, Tiptoe Synth Loop. Now this is just a simple little loop that plays for like 15 seconds and uh, we're going to make it repeat endlessly and that's how we're going to have our background music. So we can have channels. Uh, what a channel is essentially is you can have uh, between one channel 1 and 32. It is uh, just, it's just a channel that you play sound on. So you can have 32 simultaneous sounds playing on these channels if you have a channel playing on a sound playing on a specific channel and then you play another sound on that channel it's going to interrupt it so keep that in mind so we'll put the music on channel 32 now we're going to use zero for a continuous loop and now when we run this we should have music it's a little loud okay and it's going to start over here so it just keeps looping forever now that's a bit loud, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is at the start of frame we're also going to change the volume of this channel. So we got our music on channel 32, so we are going to go under samples and we're going to do something called set channel uh, volume. We can also set the frequency and the position, which is like where it's panning. Oh wait, no that's the pan, I actually don't know what position is. Um, Alright, so set sample or set channel volume, channel 32. And that could be between uh, 0 and 100, 0 being nothing and 100 being the loudest. We'll make it 50, so that should have cut the sound quite a bit. And you could do all kinds of stuff. You could have this set up so that your players could affect the different channels' uh, sounds through the uh, options so they could pick their, their sample sound and music volume. Alright, so we're going to make this lower. I'm going to make it like 25. There, I like that. Okay, so now we're gonna want to add some sound effects for when our dude jumps. Essentially, whenever what you want to do is for the jump, when, however you have programmed your game, whenever your player jumps, that's when you're gonna want to do it. Now we use the platform movement object, so we're gonna have to do this whenever uh, a jump occurs through pressing X. I think is what I did. Yeah. So I'm just actually gonna add the sound effect up here to where I have the. Uh, to where I have the jump initiated. So when I have upon pressing X an object is standing or a player is standing on the ground, that's when he jumps. We are going to play the sample. And it is going to be this one. It's called Boing. Let's see how that works. Okay, pretty good. Now another thing we can do. We're going to actually change this. We're going to put this on a specific channel, and then we're going to randomize the frequency so that the, the boing sound isn't so just basic and static. It'll, it'll kind of mix up a bit. So we're going to uh, play the, the channel on a, or sound on a specific channel. So play sample on a specific channel, and that sample is the boing. And we're going to use channel 31. Okay, and 
Also, we need to randomize that, so um, we are going to do that now. Whenever we jump, we're going to do it right before the sound effect plays. We're going to set the sample, or sorry, set the channel frequency. I don't like setting sample frequency because sometimes it doesn't seem to actually randomize it. It's a bit iffy, but when you set the channel frequency, it seems to get it every time. So, channel is 31. Now we're going to do a random range. Um, I'm not really sure about what frequencies sound good, so we're just gonna we're gonna wing this. It's R range, I think that's right. Oh no, it's R random. Yeah, R random is uh, lets you do a range between. It's a random range between two uh, numbers. So we'll say, what's the top? Hundred thousand. Okay, so probably thirty thousand to seventy thousand. Now this might not be right at all. We're gonna we're gonna find out. Okay, so make sure it's in the right order. It is not. We want to set the frequency before we play the sound effect. I'm trying it now. It's pretty good. Okay. Now I've also uh, added something to the game. Here, I'll show you now. When you click on the dude, it blows up. I don't know. Why not? Another example of instigating a sound effect. So what we're going to do is wherever that explosion occurs, how we have that program in the game, that's when I click on him, that's when it does all this. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a sample. We're going to play sample on a specific channel. Now, um, let me get it from a file. It's, it's this cannon sound. And the channel, we're going to use channel 30. Now, if you don't use channels, it'll just play the sound on any available channel. But by using specific channels, you can kind of get more control over how, how sound works in your game. You can make sure the stuff you need to hear gets played. All right, so that'll make an explosion sound whenever we click on them. And we can uh, go ahead and we're going to go ahead and randomize that as well. So we're going to uh, set the set the uh, frequency of the channel. Set channel frequency. That was channel 30. And the frequency is random range. Um, 40,000. 80. It's kind of a terrible sound effect, but it works. Okay, <clears throat> so another thing we're going to do is... Uh, we're gonna make it so that whenever you the the player hits something, that it uh, it plays a collision sound effect. So let's do that now. So we're going to do uh, with the platform movement object. We are going to do collision testing, test for obstacle overlap, and we're going to ask if the player object is overlapping a backdrop. So when that happens, then that means we are hitting a backdrop, and we're going to play a sound effect. So we're just going to play a sample, and I got something called jab. Now, you want to do this however you trigger uh, your collisions in your code. This is when you want to do this. Now, this is not going to work just right. You're going to see here in a second why. So... Ooh, that's bad. Alright, so it keeps playing the sound effect repeatedly as long as it is overlapping the backdrop. So we need to have a way to make sure that it's just whenever it collides once. So to make sure this sound effect only triggers once, we are going to add an alterable value to this. We're going to call it speed, SPD. <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to constantly find out what the speed is of our object, and we're going to plug it into that variable. So we're going to set the alterable value of speed to, since we just want it when he hits the ground, we're going to get the, the uh, Y velocity. So on the event where it says test for obstacle overlap and the player is overlapping a backdrop, add another condition. We are going to check to see if the alterable value of speed is greater than 100. If it is, we're going to play that sound effect. All right, let's try it now. One hundred seems a little uh, not quite enough. We want we don't want it to uh, be playing that sound right off the bat. So still did it. 
Um, let's try 300. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and randomize this a bit. So uh, we're going to delete that. We're not going to play it there. We're going to put it on channel 19, or no, sorry, 29. So we're going to sample. We are going to uh, set the sample or the channel frequency. The channel is 29. We are going to set it to the random range. Um, I don't know, 30,000 to 80,000 seems pretty good. And you can play around with these numbers all you want to get the effect you're looking for. Okay, so sample, uh, play sample on a specific channel. Okay, that sample is the jab sound, and we're putting it on channel 29. Let's make sure these are in the right order. Frequency is set first, jab sound is second. Should work. <laughs> A little high. That's not bad. Now there are a few things to keep in mind uh, when working with sounds. There's some things we can do here. You can compress the sounds. That'll lower the uh, the file size. And you can do maximum or normal. Eh, I wouldn't worry about that unless you're making for mobile. And since you're using Og Vorbis or you should be using OGG, then you won't be having a problem with that. Um, but we can do something called Okay, you want to make sure multi samples is selected. Otherwise, you can only play one sound effect at a time. And play samples or play sounds over frames is um, what that'll do is like, let's say you have a song going or a sound effect going. When you switch the frame, it'll keep playing it. I don't like to do that, but you can do that if you need to. Um, and the last thing is you can, it'll automatically mute the samples when the application loses focus. That means if you like minimize it or you're on a different application, you won't hear it. If you don't want that to happen, check that right there. You can also pan, like I said, panel pan, you know, between the two speakers. You can lock a channel and unlock it. That'll keep sounds from automatically playing on, on that channel, which, like I said, if you uh, just play a sound, it'll play it on whatever channel is available. And I don't know if I mentioned it. One thing you need to keep in mind, if you have a sound that you absolutely need to have played, like, for example, if you have a very sound busy game and you were using all your channels um, and you try to trigger a sound, it won't play. So if you select uninterruptible here, it'll make sure that the sound gets played no matter what. It'll it'll kill one of the the interruptible sounds to replace it with an uninterruptible sound. All right, so that pretty much covers it. So hopefully you guys found this useful and educational. This is the basics of how to do sound in Click Team Fusion 2.5. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, guys, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Peace out.